Welcome aboard, Joe Holbrook here, the cloud tech guy, the blockchain dude, uh, whatever you want to call me. Hey, I'm here to help and get you uh, hopefully certified here with the Certified Blockchain Solutions Architect Exam. Now, I'm having a mini boot camp uh, that is going to be here on YouTube. I'm going to be running approximately... Uh, 10 of these sessions. These are mini boot camps to get you up to speed on specific subjects and the objectives for the exam. I also have several courses coming out and practice questions as well on Udemy uh, that you can go ahead and take a look at. And I am also excited to announce that I will be holding a BTA, Blockchain Solutions Architect, boot camp which will be about eight hours uh, it'll be a live lesson on Pearson but that won't be until uh, it'll be recorded next month but probably won't be in the Pearson Safari uh, uh, pool I guess you would call it until uh, about September but for the time being feel free to watch the videos uh, and reach out if you have any questions let's go ahead and get started so my name is Joe Holbrook. I've been a uh, technical instructor, a blockchain extraordinaire, cryptocurrency expert for quite a while. I've also been focused on cloud computing. And one of my favorite parts of the cloud is to work with blockchains as a service. Let's go ahead and talk about, in this module, the six components of a blockchain. Now, depending on the, the vendor, depending on the organization or whoever is doing the training there'll be four six eight components of a blockchain but I, I think it's important to understand really six components of a typical blockchain and let's go ahead and talk about uh, what these are now when it comes to blockchains uh, we're going to talk about the key components of a blockchain that's that's really the overview that we'll go ahead and get started with but before we get started let's refresh your memory about what a blockchain is now a blockchain is the platform it is distributed in other words it's not centralized typically however you could certainly set up a lot of the enterprise blockchains to be more centralized and less distributed when it comes to user consensus, there's different consensus algorithms. And in another module, we'll talk about the consensus algorithms because they're very important to know for this exam. And, and uh, we'll go ahead and hold off and get into details of those, but be aware we'll um, get you up to speed on those. Blockchain is the enabler. And lastly, blockchains are redefining how businesses create efficiencies. This is really important to understand, especially from a use case perspective. Now, let's go ahead and just go ahead and confirm that we understand what a blockchain is. It basically enables decentralized trust. In other words, there's no intermediary generally, especially like on a platform like Ethereum. Now, if you want to go use a Corda or uh, a Hyperledger, you're going to be more centralized. Typically, it's going to be permission-based. Again, that's a little bit different. When it comes to blockchains, it's an immutable platform. In other words, when it's written to, uh, when you write blocks to the blockchain, it's appended, it is not deleted or modified. The protocols define the level of trust. And lastly, essentially, the blockchains use private key cryptography. This enables push transactions. And then blockchain scale. Now, once again, uh, each individual blockchain uh, types that are out there, whether it's permissioned or permissionless, private or public, or um, uh, any other acronyms you may just hear out there, there's a lot of uh, FUD out there, but I want to cover uh, really what you need to focus on for this exam. When it comes to components, there's really six components. The first is there's cryptography, there's peer-to-peer -peer networks, and then there's that shared digital ledger that's distributed throughout the blockchain. And then you have a consensus algorithm, and then there's typically going to have to be some kind of 
rules that validate the transactions. And then lastly, you're going to have some kind of like virtual machine. And that virtual machine, for example, uh, is typically going to be a logical component. It's going to be implemented as part of a node generally, and it's part of that ecosystem. And the reality is, is for example, with Ethereum, it uses a, a Turin-based virtual machine. And again, the VM uh, is, is going to really be um, you know, processing all the blockchain transactions. It's going to, to basically um, do most of the work in the blockchain. We'll go ahead and uh, talk more about this. When it comes to create uh, key components here, the first is cryptography. It's very important for a blockchain to be encrypted and having in some kind of cryptography for transactions, especially if this is using a peer-to-peer -peer network, you want to be able to ensure that there's some kind of privacy. And when you have that peer-to-peer -peer network and that end-to-end -end encryption, basically you have the peers doing all the work and there's no intermediaries. And generally there's no need for a centralized authority. Another area that you want to know and, and make sure that you can define is a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, basically on a peer-to-peer -peer network, all the computers share responsibility for processing transactions and keeping a copy of the blockchain. Remember that the blockchain is going to be distributed among all the nodes in the blockchain. And so essentially, in a nutshell, the workloads are going to be shared. The ledger. Now, the digital ledger is perhaps probably the most important part of the blockchain because that's the differentiator. Now, if we look at a, a centralized database like SQL, it's very different in how you can basically take a fungible platform and make it, you know, essentially not fungible. And so a ledger is really um, going to be a shared ledger. It's a logical component as well. This ledger is going to be distributed essentially inside that node, inside the virtual machine. And when the nodes are running essentially, that ledger is being updated and it's all part of that ecosystem. And then we have what's called a consensus algorithm. Now this consensus algorithm is also a logical component uh, it is uh, implemented as part of the node application, essentially. Generally, you also want to be aware that uh, there is going to be uh, different consensus methods. Now, in another module, we're going to really talk more about the differences between proof of work and proof of stake. And also talk about other, um, uh, other algorithms, uh, consensus algorithms, such as DPOS, Byzantine fault tolerance, etc. But for this module, just be aware that at a high level, that the consensus algorithm is implemented as part of that node application. And this is what really determines what's called the world state. And the world state is basically what exactly is the point in time sort of blockchain status when it comes to writing to the blockchain. And one of the challenges with the blockchain, when it scales typically, especially in a permissionless like Ethereum, um, you're going to have more nodes, and every one of the nodes has to participate in that world state generally. When it comes to blockchain components, validity rules is very important. Like, how do you validate the state? In other words, how is that transaction validated? And when it comes to validating transactions, once again, it's really important to define in the uh, algorithm how that, uh, you know, how that transaction is going to be made valid. In other words, like in proof of work, it's going to be handled differently than in proof of stake. We're going to talk more about transactions, validations, uh, you know, other features and functions, security and other modules. But at a high level, make sure you know that validity rules is typically going to be uh, how the user and the transactions are validated. Does that user have a, a valid wallet? Uh, does that user have the right keys? 
And then virtual machines. Now, when it comes to VMs, the virtual machines are basically uh, just like a VM in like cloud computing. You're going to go ahead and deploy this virtual machine. It's going to be using resources as part of a computer program, essentially. When it says resources, or when I say resources, what I mean is this computer code that's going to be running on this virtual machine is going to basically use in memory and CPUs and storage space. And it's going to be basically coded uh, in that virtual machine. And, and again, the virtual machine is what? That's your logical component uh, where every um, node in that uh, ecosystem is going to run. And then when it comes to additional training, I do have some additional online events coming up. Um, I am going to be uh, hosting some additional events down the road, and I'll make sure I release those out uh, when they are actually set up. So thank you again for joining. Uh, pay attention to another nine videos as part of the mini boot camp. Uh, the next one we're going to cover basically the difference between Ethereum and Hyperledger, some of the terms and components and use cases between the two for this exam. Let's go ahead and continue on. Talk to you later on another YouTube video.